In Wicklow, the six-man gang were traveling through the Cullenmore Bends just north of Ashford. Although now bypassed, these bends were well known to any regular travelers of the N11 in the late 90s. It was here that the gang planned to stage their heist. However, this was not a traditional criminal gang. These men were dissident Republicans. The night uh, of the dramatic signing of the Good Friday Agreement was a time of, of great euphoria among the political parties that put their name to it. But among the security services and among the intelligence agencies, uh, there was a knowledge that dissident Republicans would now step up their efforts. Those who believe in a united Ireland can make that case now by persuasion, not violence or threats. Politicians from all sides were all too keenly aware that all it would take would be one spectacular success in terms of a major bomb and people would begin to question the motivation of Gerry Adams and Martin McGuinness and unionists in particular would scratch their heads and say, well, are Republicans really on ceasefire? Everything that the IRA can do to stop the real IRA, of course, is welcome. I don't want to see any more deaths take place as no one in Northern Ireland does. There was a growing awareness that the real IRA were a force to be reckoned with, but they were short of funds to buy new weaponry and to continue their armed campaign. They looked to Dublin because the Dublin Brigade of the old IRA had suffered a number of defections. Their experience was called into play to set up uh, the Cullen Moore Raid. The gang put together for the Ashford Raid included three experienced men and three with no criminal records but with Republican connections. All were Dublin-based. They proceeded to set up mock roadworks, posing as county council workers. They would then wait on their target. Most cash movements in the country had been conducted on Thursday 30th of April in anticipation of the blue flu action on May 1st. But one Securicor van was carrying out its cash run as normal. It was carrying £250,000. It's a quite a narrow area. The traffic moves slowly. It's very easy to stop a vehicle here. So in that regard, it, it is quite a good location. But in terms of how they were proposing to extricate themselves from it afterwards, how they were proposing to get away themselves, because by virtue of stopping the traffic, they were going to create a, you know, create a long log jam. And uh, it was uh, you know, uncertain as to what their, what their post-heist uh, plan was going to be. On that day, they had decided to arrive at the location, uh, Cullen Moore near Ashford in County Wicklow. They would pose as council workers. Uh, they would wait till the van arrived. When the security van arrived, they had intended to cut a hole in it, uh, pour some petrol in, and threaten to burn it uh, so that the men inside would open up the back doors, uh, jump out, and allow them to take the money and get away. Uh, one of the individuals was in a van about a mile away with a Garda scanner so that he could listen to radio traffic um, and mobile phones so that he could communicate with the gang on scene and tell them what was going on. The northbound carriageway would have been carrying less traffic. There was an awful lot of traffic traveling south at this stage. But this, just as the Secure Corps van would have come around the bend, they pulled their transit van out in, out in front of it and stopped the traffic and basically sort of held up both carriageways and then, then all hell broke loose. Out of the van now! Out of the van, man! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Open that door now! Get out! Get out of the what happened with us was a Friday evening, it was a bank holiday weekend and we were coming home from work and uh, we worked down in Arklow at the time and we were coming around the corner here and basically what happened was we just the traffic came to a standstill. Strange enough, during that time, it wouldn't have been such an unusual thing because this was the main N11. You, know, you can imagine what it'd be like now. So, but then we came across. We were around here somewhere, maybe a little further down, and I saw a Secure Corps fan. And I suddenly, I thought they were having a puncture. I mean, I know in hindsight that was just totally ridiculous. But anyway, we knew there was something up. Oh Jesus! They were, they were heavily armed. Uh, they had an assault rifle, they had a pump-action machine gun, uh, an imitation 
rocket launcher. They also uh, had a hammer and they smashed some of the windows. They were trying to get inside and they had a, it was like, my memory of it would be like a hatchet, but with like a lump hammer on top. So a large lump hammer and they were trying to get it, gain access to it. And that, that was really the turmoil at the time. Get on the car now. Get it. Get on the floor. Get on the ground now. Get down. Don't look at me. Stay down there. Stay down. And then I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden there was a guy outside who was one of the security guys. And he was flat on the ground, just about, it would be just about got there, and he had his hands um, behind his head and uh, like a Kalashnikov, we were told afterwards, that's what it was, it uh, was at his head. Stay down there! Don't look at me! Stay down As the gang there. made their move on the Securicor van, they were unaware they were being watched. In fact, Garda surveillance on all dissident Republican activity throughout 1998 was quite extensive. The Garda had an excellent intelligence sources within these organisations. They knew very much what they were doing. They knew the time the real IRA tried to bring a bomb across to Britain um, and they stopped a car packed with explosives at Dunleary. Gardaí searched a red BMW car as it waited to board the Stena Line ferry for Holyhead. In the boot they discovered almost a thousand pounds of explosives in the form of a fertiliser mix. They also stopped a car packed with explosives as it was heading north. Uh, they found seized explosives, guns, ammunition uh, at two training camps, one at Stamullen in County Meath, that was an underground bunker. They also found a training camp in the woods in County Kildare. Uh, they arrested and charged a number of people in connection with those two camps. Um, and they also found a large quantity of explosive material which was stored uh, on the pier at Hoth in County Dublin. So there were a number of significant successes that the Gardaí did have against the dissident republic and they did have good sources of information and intelligence. They knew who these people were and they knew what they were doing. I think there was a political imperative to get on top of dissident Republicans and get on top of the real IRA in particular. Uh, after the murder of Veronica Guerin, the problem of organised crime had been, if not dealt with, it had certainly been dealt a very serious blow. But the uh, focus of the authorities uh, after the Good Friday Agreement was firmly to clamp down on Republicans. All the evidence points to the fact that they had extraordinary intelligence, extraordinary penetration of organisations like the real IRA. Coming up to the day, it was becoming clear to the Gardaí that um, whatever the operation was, it was about to come to fruition. And they kept tail on, on those people that had been watching. Uh, it became clear that it was going to be in the southeast. The National Surveillance Unit was put on the job, and they kept watch on a number of people that had been identified to them by senior members of the Guard Intelligence Section. And they kept watch on their movements, who they were in contact with, where they were going, what type of activities they were carrying out. And bit by bit, the Guardies started to put their operation to combat it uh, as well. On May 1st, the National Surveillance Unit were tailing the gang members for over five hours. They had followed them from Dublin towards Ashford and saw them set up the roadworks at Cullen Moor. When surveillance guardee spotted a Securicor van travelling north through Rathnew, they realised it might be the target. They didn't take part in the blue flu that day. I mean, anything could have happened. I mean, you were talking about six well-disciplined, dangerous uh, subversives who were about to rob £250,000. It would have been a dereliction of duty if these guys hadn't worked. Anything could have happened. Grab your weapon, girl. And something did happen. Terror and chaos reigned as the gang made their move and Gardee moved in. Shots were fired. One man would die. 